from Mark 5, verse 1 to about verse... About verse... 20... 20? Here it goes. They came to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. And he had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one was able to bind him any more, even with a chain, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains. And the chains had been torn apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces. And no one was strong enough to subdue him. Constantly, night and day, he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains and gnashing him, gashing himself with stones. My bad. Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed down before him and shouting with a loud voice, he said, What business do we have with each other, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I implore you by God, do not torment me. For he had been saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And when he, and he was asking him, What is your name? And he said to him, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he began to implore him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there was a large herd of swine feeding nearby on the mountain. The demons implored him, saying, Send us into the swine, so that we may enter them. Jesus gave them permission. And coming out, the unclean spirits entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea, about two thousand of them, and they were drowned in the sea. Their herdsmen ran away and reported it in the city and in the country, and the people came to see what it, ha it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and observed the man who had been demon-possessed sitting down, clothed and in his right mind, the very ma man who had, been, who had had the legion, and they became frightened. Those who had seen it described to them how it had happened to the demon-possessed man and all about the swine. And they began to implore him to leave their region. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed was imploring him that he might accompany him. And he did not let him, but he said to him, Go home to your people and report to them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in Decapolis what great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. Usually the most proper thing to post a religious YouTube video? I don't care. I might, I need to use my religion degree somehow. So I'm going to post a sermon I did a while ago. I don't have my notes, so it's going to be very loose. So setting this whole thing up, looking back on the end part of Mark chapter 4, it has a demonic exorcism story where Jesus comes a demonic storm. Back in those days, they believed demons were in everything. Demons came from the sea. Now we're going into this thing. Mark is still going to take the reader along these veins, and you're going to see more of that line of thought in this exorcism. Um, when he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. It's interesting. This word unclean, it means like filthy, means like extremely filthy. It means even worse than my room right now. That's how bad that means. And it's only used in Mark once, which is, makes it unique to Mark in the sense that this is the word that kind of describes the spirit that is in this dude. And he had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one was able to f find him anymore, even with a chain. So the, the spirit that was in this dude, whether he was mentally deficient, but if he was disabled or he had some kind of really horrible mental illness or whatever, this this kind of thing was giving him super normal strength. Um, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Nobody in that area was strong enough to keep him down. Nobody was able to, to keep him up. So they just thought, okay, we're going to keep this dude in chains. And looking on throughout the rest of the, the verses, he was screaming every night. So you have to picture the townspeople going to bed, hearing this dude in the, in the cemetery screaming all the time. It's horrible. And being that this area in Palestine, in Roman Palestine, was 
considered to be more of the Gentile area, they wanted to respect their dead, but they didn't get to respect their dead because this dude, this was the only place for this dude to live. So we have a problem, but it's not really working. It works for them, but it's not the way that it should be. So we're going to, I'm going to continue looking at this. Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed down before him. So dude was naked. Saw Jesus, ran down and bowed before him. Okay, so I'm putting myself in a disciple's point of view. One of, one of the disciples, probably James, because there was a disciple named James and he was an idiot. Um, read read some of the stuff. Actually, Peter was the big bonehead. But you're on this foreign side, Gentile territory. There are pigs. You see the pigs. There are pigs over there. And that's not right. There are people working with those pigs. That's not right. And then you see this dude, buck naked, smells like death, looks like death. He's coming at you and you're thinking, oh, sweet mercy. Now, it doesn't matter. Mark writes in such a way that it doesn't matter what the disciples are thinking. Otherwise, he'd mention that. But this is this idea. <laughs> you're like, ugh. This is the confrontation part of the exorcism. Shouting with a loud voice, he said, What business do we have with each other, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God, do not torment me. This dude is calling Jesus out. It's different than the way Mark starts the book out. Partly because the first time, in the first part, it's more like, You don't know me, quit messing. This is, oh my gosh, I know who you are, and I know what power you have. Why are you here? Jesus, along the sun, is rebuking the, the thing inside him, the spirit inside the, the man. And he asks, what is your name? And the guy tells him, our name is Legion, for we are many. This man has been plagued by a lot of things. A lot of things. And that's sometimes in our lives we get so bogged down that we get this legion on top of us. This man was plagued by so many things. And they begin to implore him not to send them out. He begins to implore Jesus not to send them out of the country. Now, we're on verse 11 now. There was a large herd of swine feeding nearby on the mountain. Okay, so, like I said before, there is pigs up there. The disciples are like, this is not right, but it doesn't matter. Jesus sees this and goes, hmm. And now the demons are telling him, send us into the swine so that we may enter him. Doesn't sound like a bad idea. Okay, first off, Jewish train of thought. Pigs unclean. And it's not because any digestive stuff. It's more, oh, hey, you can eat this, but remember, when you die, it eats you. So maybe no. You shouldn't eat that. That's why, that's why in Jewish, in the Annie culture, ancient Jewish, and, and to this day, Jews don't eat pork. Look it up. It's in Torah. It's in the first five books of the Old Testament. Um, and Jesus gave them permission. So here we have the authority of Jesus over the demons. The authority of Christ over the supernatural evil forces that are in, in the world. He, had, he gave them permission. So what do they do? They go into the swine. And the swine, pigs, scream and holler and run Back into the ocean. Back into into the ocean. Now, or the sea. It's not really an ocean. My, my apologies, YouTube verse. Um, so, once again, going back into the disciple James's point of view, I'm like, okay, sweet. 
they are going back, and to the readers of Mark, you're, they're thinking, okay, sweet, okay, they're going back from whence they came. Now, this is a flip side. Yes, we, we sometimes get bogged down by life, but here's the thing. What we think works doesn't matter, and here's how that happens. The herdsmen ran away and reported it to, in the city and in the country, and the people came to see what happened. Okay, so first off, this is money. Um, the people here are raising the swine, possibly to feed the Roman troops. Possibly. So, this is money. They just saw their entire life savings get drowned in that sea. They're pissed. And they told everybody else, they're like, oh my gosh, this isn't right. So they come to Jesus and they observe the man who had been demon possessed sitting down clothed and in his right mind. So somebody gave him a cloak to sat him down and he was sing again. And they, they're freaking out because that was the crazy dude who had been screaming day and night in the cemetery. This was the reason they weren't allowed to visit their dad, and now he is sane and subdued. And this dude just sent money to die. The people in the story are just sitting there, and they have the same reaction that the disciples have in the last half of the last chapter. Who do you think you are? You come in here, you destroy our livelihood. You come in here, you mess with the status quo. And then you just turn things topsy-turvy. This is the way of Christ. He turns things upside down. It's going to look so bad, but who cares? It's the way of Christ. He turns things upside down because there are better ways of doing things. And we don't grasp that outside of ourselves. We think this works. It doesn't work. And when Jesus shows up, he changes us. And he changes the way we think. And we don't want him touching what works. We don't want him touching our crap. So they tell him, go home to your people. He, they, he, so they tell him, go, 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 go away. They began to implore him to leave their region. Go, go, Jesus, you crazy person. You touched with our crap. You messed everything up. Now this guy is back into society and we can visit our dad. We were used to not doing that. Thank you. You wrecked us. Go away. And the dude wants to go back with Jesus. He's like, take me with you. You've done so many wonderful things. You've healed me. And that's, the th that's also the way of Christ. When we come to him and we bring our, our mess, our mess and our crap, and we surrender it, we become like the man who's been beleaguered, who's been suffering under legion, and we become restored. Otherwise... We become like the townspeople, and you have touched our crap. You have messed up our lives. You have destroyed us. I know this isn't the best camera angle, but I don't really care. I'm about done. And Jesus tells the guy, go tell everybody you know. The guy essentially becomes the first missionary. Mark writes this up. This dude becomes the first missionary to his own people in the Decapolis. Go tell him what, what I've done for you. So it further establishes Jesus' authority. And he went away and he began to proclaim into Decapolis what great things Jesus has done for him, and everyone was amazed. Everyone was amazed because that dude used to be the crazy dude that we don't take our people to. And this is what the Lord has done. This has been Valdez Speaks. I might post some more things. But this is what I've got for today. Peace be with you.